Hello, and welcome to my talk, Powerful Productivity with Hyperbole and Org Mode. I'm the author of Hyperbole, Bob Weiner. So a little about me, I'm the co-maintainer now with uh, Matt Liddell of Hyperbole, uh, which is part of GNU Alpha. And I am a long time application architect and developer. I've been developing Emacs packages for many years and Hyperbole is kind of the culmination of working on uh, a lot of different aspects of information management and hypertext systems. The goal of this talk is to show that embedding uh, simple Hyperbole text patterns into org documents uh, gives org even more power and helps uh, bring your documents to life, as you'll see uh, when we go through the interactive examples here, uh, without really adding much cognitive overhead to anything that you need to do. So an overview of uh, what we'll talk about, why the package is called hyperbole, uh, how the context-sensitive action and assist keys work. Those are collectively known as the spark keys. Um, what implicit buttons are and some great examples of those. Uh, and then how the action key uh, works not only outside of uh, org mode, but with uh, existing org mode constructs. Uh, how we can search uh, through org mode with one of hyperbole subsystems, high rollo. Uh, embedding org tables in uh, the hyperbole uh, outliner, which is called the K outliner. Ways that you can use uh, hyperbole constructs of action buttons, which you'll learn about in key series uh, to create interactive demonstrations uh, that let you uh, produce uh, good examples uh, for any kind of uh, tutorials you might want to do for people. And finally, some acknowledgments in the conclusion of the talk. So why is it called hyperbole? We wanted something uh, fun, uh, something that people could interpret in many different ways, uh, and also to show a little of the uh, magic that you'll see that hyperbole brings uh, to hypertext and uh, manipulation of uh, uh, the button action metaphor that we use in hyperbole. Here's a nice quote from uh, John Wigley, who was a maintainer of Emacs at one time, and he, he wrote a whole article talking about hyperbole and how it helps you uh, get a handle on the ever-increasing information load that we have to manage every day as knowledge workers. So, Let's talk about just getting started with hyperbole. How do you install it? It works on every major uh, current Emacs version. Uh, to install it, you use the Emacs package manager and just uh, execute this one line right there, uh, package install. If you want to uh, get a more advanced version, which is our development release, you just uh, point your uh, package manager to Alpha Devel and and then install it normally. Uh, you activate hyperbole after installing it uh, with this line and you deactivate it uh, with uh, this line because it's a uh, it's a global minor mode so you can just toggle it on and off and if you don't like it you can rapidly get rid of it uh, using this interactive command as well. So uh, complete details are available online and this entire presentation will be made available as part of Hyperbole um, uh, version 9.0, which will be released this month. If you'd like to get involved with Hyperbole or just uh, hear some of the discussion, we have a pretty low traffic uh, mailing list. Just send a message to that address. And a lot of people through the years have been asking, uh, uh, although we have a lot of written documentation for some videos, so here you go. There's a lot of hyperbole videos out there now on YouTube. And again, you'll have all the links to them uh, to look at at your convenience. 
So let's talk about how you interact with hyperbole, um, especially from an org perspective. Uh, one major feature of hyperbole are the smart keys, which are context sensitive keys, which are um, made a return is called the action key and uh, control you made a return is the assist key. Uh, these keys are shared with org mode since you know there's a, a binding that you probably use a fair bit made a return and we'll talk about how that sharing uh, works and how you can use it inside org mode. So outside of org you can also press made a return the action key and get all sorts of context sensitive behavior uh, for example, a simple behavior here is just go to the end of the line, hit made a return, and it will scroll that line to the top of the window, and the assist key will move it to the bottom as much as it can. So you have a proportional scrolling is one example of the context sensitive keys. If you ever want to know what each key will do in any context, you can just type control H A and it will give you an elaborate description of exactly what will happen in that context and all the attributes associated with any uh, hyperbole button. This is actually a key series button that we'll learn about later that I just invoked to actually type those keys. So now we're going to go on to using the action keys on uh, what hyperbole calls implicit buttons which are basically textual patterns that the context sensitive keys recognize and treat as hyper buttons. So basically hyperbole has a bunch of built in types and it recognizes a very light form of markup as you'll see. And it turns those patterns into hyper buttons that can execute arbitrary actions. So the first uh, type of implicit button I'd like to tell you about are path links, right? Everybody uh, links to different paths, but as you can see right here, hyperbole has a much more advanced notion of that. You can embed uh, both elist variables and environment variables with this dollar braces syntax anywhere in a path. Uh, and then you can have hard coded path followed by uh, a hash uh, sign like a markdown section link, but this uh, hash sign works in all different modes. It works in org mode, it works on single line comments and uh, programming modes, it, it works uh, to match to just regular Emacs outline sections. So here we have a regular um, textual document and we're linking to the section org mode and then we can have colon line number colon uh, column number. But in this case, since we link to a section, these are relative to the section. So let's just activate this with made a return and we jumped right there and you can see even though the header was all in caps, uh, uh, hyperbole recognized it. Uh, did a case insensitive match. We didn't have to add uh, a dash between org and mode like we have to do in a normal markdown link. Um, so you just put the, uh, the section that you want to link to exactly uh, as it's typed if you want. And you can see we went down two lines and to the sixth column. So it did exactly what we expected right there. So other uh, forms of using this uh, section link is here's to an org file. And we jump to another talk of ours where you can see all the action types that are built in uh, to hyperbole. It's quite rich. You can also uh, just link to a comment within uh, a shell script or a configuration file. So here we're jumping to uh, a comment line right there. So very flexible um, uh, path name handling. There's even more to it that we'll see down here. Um, if you add a uh, dash to a um, elisp library, where you can put the .el on here as well, or .elc if you even want it, uh, this will automatically load that library. So you see in the mini buffer it loaded org ID. If you put a, an exclamation mark in front of a command line command, 
it will run that in an Emacs shell. So here we just went to the shell and it ran the date command. Similarly, we could just look at the top of our .emacs file. Uh, and again, this is all running inside org mode. Um, so you could, you could embed those, those implicit buttons in, uh, programming comments if you wanted to, and they'd work just as well for you. And if you want to run a GUI program, you put an ampersand, uh, in front of it. And on a Mac, I can just say open a PDF file and there it is. It opens it in preview and we can jump back to where we were. So a lot of flexibility. You can, you don't need any other, uh, um, libraries to, to do, uh, recognize different file suffixes. All of that's just built right into hyperbole. So now hyperbole also provides an implicit type called, uh, key series. Uh, key series are just essentially like keyboard macros, but typed into your buffer. Uh, they're surrounded by, uh, braces. And that's the only thing that tells hyperbole that, uh, they're a key series. There's nothing else associated with these hyper buttons except the text that you see here. So you can just type them directly into your buffers. So here's just a, a set of operations to show you the flexibility of what you can do. So if I activate this, it's going to switch to the, my scratch buffer and insert that text that you see there. And you see RET will embed uh, return keys uh, in, a, in a key series. So the difference between a key sequence and a key series is that a key series can be any number of key sequences uh, strung together. Uh, so here uh, is another example where what if we wanted to display this word file uh, as an HTML uh, file in our web browser. So let's do it. Made a return. It displays right away. And you see, we were able to actually, since we're looking at just part of the org file, it exported just that part. And you can see these links uh, do work. So pretty cool already, but there's a lot more as you explore hyperbole. The next type of uh, implicit uh, button type that we have is uh, linking to info nodes. So the syntax here is just double quotes and then uh, parentheses for the manual that you want to link to. And then you can put a node name or an index uh, item name. So you can link immediately to any index entry in any info manual. So let's try it. So this took us right to uh, the definition of what control C control L does in the org manual. Pretty good. Down here, we have some other uh, info uh, links, but we've added uh, the hyperbole uh, name to the button. So if you name these, you can then reference these names elsewhere in the document. So you can see that you can activate this button either from there or from its name and it it works either way and so once we have a name like ib we can anywhere in the document we can embed an i link uh, type uh, implicit button and that links to the ib button and the neat thing is that when we activate this button it actually does whatever the implicit button did so let's try to jump back to that section and in fact, it does display implicit buttons. So you can have these implicit links. Further, hyperbole gives you um, something called a, a personal button file, which is just uh, activated uh, through the mini buffer menu that hyperbole exposes a lot of its uh, capabilities from. So I'll just use that and type control H, H, B for button file, P for personal file, and it took me to the bottom of my personal button file. And you can see in here, I've already added the same uh, implicit buttons. Once we name buttons in this file, they become global. 
and we can use them in any buffer that we want within Emacs. So then we can make global links to those buttons with the G link button type. And, or I could say control HH, let's do a global action button. And so here you see, I can then use that ID button and activate it. But, but let's change that to FRM and you see it jump to it the same way if I use the global link, it does the same thing. Excellent. So a lot of power in the way you can link with implicit buttons. Even better, we have this type called an action button, which is a generalization of implicit buttons. And all you have to do is take the outer parens off a Lisp expression, any S expression, and uh, change those to angle brackets. And all of a sudden, you've got a hyper button. So here we have a variable uh, where we wouldn't have any parens, but we can just put the angle brackets around it. And then when we activate it with made a return in the MIDI buffer, it displays the value of that variable. If we instead um, invoke a command with, a, it can be a function or a command with arguments, uh, then it'll just run that. So here's uh, doing a grep over the current directory. Uh, for action buttons. And once we get that grep, we can then like jump to any of these that we want, staying in the same buffer, like, like a normal uh, grep buffer that you've uh, gotten some other way. If we want to go back to where we were, we have a history button in uh, hyperbole that just takes us back there. So um, the, we have a, a built-in uh, command that sets up the key logging that you see at your right. Uh, you just invoke this. It actually installs the interaction log package if you don't have it. Sets up the nice uh, syntax highlighting that you see on the right and lets you use it for any of your demos. There's another uh, type that uh, interacts with um, YouTube videos. So one of the hard things to achieve with YouTube videos is, is playing just a snippet. And so it's easy to get a start time, but not to get an end time. So hyperbole takes care of that for you and lets you uh, have a flexible way of specifying the start and the end time, as you see here. And it also doesn't make you put in the full URL, but just the ID of a video that you want to play. And let's see if this works. You can integrate with Tremax as we showed you, Ace Window, Org Mode, we've seen that all along. And uh, I don't need to talk to you about Org Mode, but we're still working on just making this perfect, but uh, send us your comments of what works, what doesn't work in Org Mode, and we'll make it work uh, smoothly like all the rest. So there you see, it just uh, stopped and uh, right at the point that we wanted it to. You can also uh, search YouTube, and I'll just activate this button, and uh, you get all the matching uh, videos for you to play that match any phrase that you give it. So nice and convenient, and again, you can embed these in programming files or anywhere you like. Um, of course, a lot of org files. Now, the next uh, type of implicit button is kind of interesting. Uh, it's called window grids. And uh, this is uh, like a table of uh, Emacs windows that you can fill with different uh, groupings of buffers. So let's say we wanted just uh, the existing Durad buffers that we have. So here again, I'm using one of these uh, key sequence uh, buttons. And I've said, okay, give me a Windows grid and just give me buffers that match Durad mode and give me a two by three grid. So I hit it up. Let's try it again. Uh, okay, let's do the next one, see if that works. Okay, there we go. So uh, here's a, 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 a two by three set of uh, uh, org files 
that if we go back to show you what we linked to, we said, uh, find me just the org files that match this Emacs pattern and uh, give it to me in a two by three matrix. So if I change this to two by two, you can see that it immediately adapts right there. And then if I have installed the ACE window um, package, I can just say meta O F and jump right to the one that was labeled F, meta O S. So I can go very rapidly if I have this Windows grid of like four by four, I can get to any uh, window immediately. And of course I could uh, automate that using uh, key series in hyperbole. So let's go back to where we were. And uh, th that kind of gives you Windows grids, but there's various ways to filter for just like programmatic files or other things that you can learn if you spend some more time with hyperbole. So we've shown you how you can embed existing hyperbole constructs inside org, but what about using the context sensitive action key on org constructs themselves? So this is where we have to talk about how we share the action key with org mode. So there's a variable to allow for that, that we've set up called hsys org enable smart keys. And let's just look at the value of that. In the mini buffer, we see it's already set to T, which is the way I want to operate, which means every context in org mode uh, make the action key work. The default is this button setting where uh, only uh, hyperbole, hyper buttons and org links are sensitive to the action key. In other contexts where you would normally use meta uh, return to insert like a new headline uh, still work that way. So out of the box, you wouldn't see much of a change. Uh, but once you change it to this T, then other contexts like the end of the line work like that, uh, that scrolling that I showed you before. So if you want to see all the context, here's a little uh, button that shows you the command smart org and its documentation uh, for all the context in org mode that the action key supports, which is quite a few. And uh, this is also the assist key. So I don't want to go into too much detail there. We have a lot to cover. so. I'm just giving you a, a taste of all of this. So where else in org mode, now that we have that setting, let's look at how the action key can help us. So the action key supports all of org's uh, standard kind of uh, buttons and links. So here's just a, a link to a target within org mode. So if I action key on that, it takes me to the target. And if I action key on that, it takes me back uh, to the link. Similarly, for radio targets, we had one way back here that we embedded, and it takes us right back here when we hit return. Uh, internal heading links work just as normal. And here I'll use uh, um, tag return, uh, I, I mean, mark, uh, pop mark to get me back to the same place. And this is just showing that a normal external file link will display just as you would expect. So you don't have to remember the uh, org open key. You can just, like you do in all these other contexts, just hit made a return. And it will typically do the right thing for you. Now, here's a comparison of how hyperbole helps if we wanted to uh, toggle inline image display as you saw in the first screen that we had where we had two images uh, that were links there. Uh, with hyperbole on the right, we just embed this uh, toggle inline images button and hit made a return on it, and that's it. With uh, org mode, we first have to embed a, a, an elisp uh, button that will disable uh, confirmation of activation of e-list buttons. And then we have to uh, move around and activate a second one uh, and have all this extra text um, to uh, toggle it. 
So here's the keystrokes involved and compare that to what you have to do with hyperbole. So by embedding hyperbole uh, buttons in your org files, you can save a lot of typing and uh, sort of get a lot more power as well. And you can always use org buttons and hyperbole buttons and any of their features uh, together. So you're not really losing anything, you're just gaining a lot of value. With org to do's, uh, guess what? When you press made return, it's going to cycle uh, through the various states of the to do. But even uh, better, there's uh, if I have multiple groups of to do's, if I hit the assist key, it'll switch from uh, Matt's to do's to Bob's to do's because we've defined that in this file. And now it just uh, goes through Bob's state. So this way we can have multiple teammate, teammates supported and we can easily, with just the action and assist key, uh, cycle through all those states rapidly. Now, even better, when we get into code blocks in org, uh, instead of having to remember yet another key, uh, the control C, control C, we can uh, run uh, the code block by just pressing the action key on the header and you see it inserted the results right there. It will, if I press the assist key, it will erase the results. I can do that on the end block as well, the same way. Uh, now, one of the interesting things hyperbole does too is it interprets uh, the result of this path variable, uh, colon separated uh, um, directories as directories. So I can just made a return on that and it recognizes that I pressed on any one of those directories and it takes me right to Dured. And similar up here, if I just want to go up to the developer directory here, I just hit made a return there and it gives me a Dured on that directory. So very rapid, I can quit out of there, quit out of there and I'm right back to where I started. So you get rapid navigation and uh, you know, I can I can tie that back in again. I wasn't going to show you this, but if I if I mark like four of these, and then I just hit the at key, it gives me a uh, Windows grid of those four. In this case, executables. So a uh, very nice uh, functionality. Again, letting you move around very rapidly. Uh, and now if we had a more involved uh, code block, I wanted to show you that uh, when you have a directory that the code is linked back to, you can activate that as an implicit button with made a return and it takes you to that directory. But if you hit it outside of the directory, then it actually just executes the code and you'll see it'll insert the results down here. This is a uh, code to implement uh, a stack and show you some uh, operation overloading like the plus and the star will concatenate two stacks or uh, double, um, you know, the, the S1 stack. Um, so it's kind of a, a flexible example that uh, you, you can find on the internet in my uh, GitHub RSW GNU. So uh, next we have the high rollo. I can't really go into too much detail about this, but uh, it is a hierarchical uh, record uh, grep, essentially. So instead of grepping across lines, it greps across entire multi-line records. And that can be any kind of record format. Generally, we work on org type files or anything in a star type outline. So in this case, we want to uh, run the rollo over uh, uh, lessons.org files within uh, this ramen org notes directory. So let's just do that. And uh, it asks for something we want to search for, so we'll search for programming, and it immediately found all of the hits. So we can do an overview of which uh, which headers, uh, which sections got hit. So we say O, and that shows us every level. If we say T, 
it shows it's just the top level. And then we can tab through all the hits. And as we get to each node, it auto expands. And when we move out of that node, it then collapses back uh, until we get to the end. So very flexible. We got to the end and then we just hit a Q and we're out of there and we're right back where we started. So you can, you can have tens of thousands of records that you search for almost instantly uh, using the high roller system. Uh, and next we have um, Hyperbole has the K outliner, which is an auto numbered outliner where each heading or cell, as we call them, uh, gets an automatic uh, unique ID that's unique within the file. And it also auto numbers each section. So let's just jump to one of these example files that we have, the, the uh, cell numbered 3D2. And you see this one, there's more cells and they're numbered this way, um, hierarchically. Uh, but you can see that this one has a, uh, an org table and it works, it's live, just like a normal org, org table. So I can hit return and add a, add a row as well. So, um, but, but within here we have all sorts of uh, very powerful outlining. You can move things around like you do in org with alt uh, down arrow or alt up arrow. And the auto numbering is dynamic. It, it uh, keeps up with all of your moves. So if I make this a sub node, it automatically gets numbered that way. Maybe if I change this to show as legal numbers, it'll be a little easier for you to track. So I can do escape tab uh, and I uh, promoted that. All right. So you can promote and demote with tab or um, you can hide um, uh, hide things. You can change the view. That's what's really neat here. You can say clip everything to just two lines per cell. And now you see there are only two lines per cell. I could say get rid of the blank lines there, the B, and it'll just be like this. And I can embed all that into, let me just put this back to the way it normally is. Now I can embed all that in the links that I do right here. So here's one where you put the pipe symbol in and that gives you a view spec right here, which you can learn about. So when I, when I say display this, it should invoke it. And you see it uh, clipped everything. It changed the numbering to legal mode and it got rid of the blank lines. So all of that, you can get a very rich kind of view on, uh, so it's a very advanced outliner to couple with org mode. And of course you can embed these in your org mode buffers as we've done here. So what we're showing here is that we can just embed simple commands and do very interesting kinds of uh, demonstrations uh, with org mode. So here's uh, what if we want to get an overview of this specific uh, buffer without changing this buffer. So we'll clone it and then display it in another window. So here you see it in overview mode and we still have our presentation over here. Uh, another thing is what if we want to mark all the backup files in a, a directory so they're ready for deletion. We show the directory and you can see all the Ds that got added to it there. So they're ready to be deleted. So lots of kinds of capabilities you can couple together. So that kind of is not an introduction to hyperbole, but uh, just a, a summary of ways that you can couple hyperbole, uh, interestingly, with org mode and get a lot more productivity out of using both. So I, I'd like to just kind of wrap up uh, by acknowledging uh, the org team uh, and um, Matt, who's my co-maintainer and wrote all the test code for hyperbole. Uh, Raman, who started to dive into hyperbole and is writing about it. Uh, John Wigley, who wrote a very interesting article you should read about hyperbole. And Adrian, who's uh, 
great programmer and wrote a, a quick blog pro posting about it. Uh, and finally, the FSF for hosting us all these years and giving us a nice home for hyperbole. And in conclusion, uh, I'd say hyperbole embeds well into org mode. Uh, very little conflict. The idea is that you should use them together. They're not really in competition. Uh, secondly, that it provides a very, very simple markup. You could see there was very little to it. Um, and yet you got very powerful actions out of it. Hyperbole and org can automate very complex things without you needing to understand how to program an e-list. I think that's a very powerful thing for people who are writers or other non-programmers who use Emacs. And in, in total, it helps you bring your text to life. So here's a uh, action button. No, it's not an action button, it's an explicit button that ran the game of life uh, when we pressed it. So you can do arbitrary things both in and out of Emacs. Here are the links to hyperbole documentation and org mode uh, documentation. So thanks very much uh, for attending. I uh, look forward to your questions and uh, seeing some of you become new hyperbole users.